Ever since the dawn of civilization, we have attempted to classify living organisms in order to study and know them better. After various attempts at classification, R.H. Whittaker proposed the Five Kingdom classification. He classified living organisms based on their cell structure, motility, the mode of nutrition, reproduction, etc. Later, Carl Weiss added one more kingdom and came up with a six kingdom classification proposal which is the most accepted classification system. From the incredibly tiny bacteria to the mighty blue whale, in short every living organism on the planet earth were grouped under these six kingdoms. Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, Rotista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Among these, the most diverse one is the animal kingdom or Animalia. And get this, the total number of species in the animal kingdom is much more than the combined number of species in all the other five kingdoms. That's quite a lot. Let's study the characteristics that make the animals different from the other living beings. Here we go. The first trait or characteristic of animals is the eukaryotic cell structure which means that the cells in animals have a well-defined nucleus and membrane-bound cell organelles. But unlike the eukaryotic cells of plantae or fungi, they do not have a cell wall. The next characteristic is that all animals have many cells in their body and hence are multicellular. The next important characteristic of animals is that they cannot synthesize their own food and depend on other organisms for their energy requirements. This type of nutrition is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition. In most animals, the mode of nutrition is actually holozoic. Holozoic is nothing but a combination of two words. Holo, which means whole, and zoic, which means animals. So, holozoic mode of nutrition means animals take in the complex food as a whole and later digest this food in their well-built digestive systems. Then, the characteristics that make the animals stand out among all the kingdoms is their mobility. Animals can move from one place to another. They jump, leap, crawl, fly and run. Now tell me, what do all the organisms do to make their race survive on earth? They reproduce. So all animals reproduce and their mode of reproduction is sexual. The development of their embryo is either direct like us humans or may involve a larval stage like in the case of frogs. When the development includes a larval stage, it is called indirect development. These are all the characteristics of the animal kingdoms. Eukaryotic cell, absence of cell wall, multicellularity, heterotrophic mode of nutrition, motile nature and sexual mode of reproduction. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you that this is the most diverse and largest kingdom. It consists of about 1.5 million species. So it has to be further subdivided in order to study the species better. Kingdom Animalia hence is divided into many subgroups called phyla. They are Porifera, Philentrata or Nidaria, Flatyhelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata and Chordata. We will learn about each one of them in the upcoming sessions. For now, let's have a quick recap. Kingdom Animalia is the largest and most diverse kingdom. Animals have a eukaryotic cell with a well-defined nucleus and membrane-bound cell organelles. Cell wall is absent in animal cells. Animals are multicellular. Animals have a heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Most animals exhibit a holozoic mode of nutrition which is a type of heterotrophic nutrition. Animals are motile and move from one place to another. Animals exhibit a sexual mode of reproduction. Development in animals is either direct, which doesn't involve a larval stage, or indirect, which involves a larval stage. Animals are categorized into smaller groups called phyla, namely Porifera, Coelentrata or Nidaria, Platyhelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, and Chordata. With that, we come to the end of this session. I'll see you very soon. Till then, stay curious and keep learning.